Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue We're coming back at you again, man. It's game day. Finally, it's game day, baby. Dallas Cowboys tonight, 820 against the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, at home at AT&T, well, it's, I guess 720 Central because Texas is Central time, but you already know that. Um, just a few things. Um, get into predictions and scoring and um, just what I think otherwise with this game. You know, other games are going on right now. There's a few upsets going on right now. There's things you expected to happen and there's things that you really didn't expect to happen. So that's just the way football is and how, how week one is seems to be going right now. Um, a lot of these games are going to be sloppy because again, a lot of these teams have not played their, their starters in, in preseason. So, you know, they're a little rusty. So, you know, these defensive players, you know, <laughs> going to take a little bit of time. Maybe the offense take a little time to gel. Some people dropping passes, things of that nature. But, again, in this game, it's going to be imperative for what the Cowboys are going to do. Now, Jason Garrett, former coach of the Dallas Cowboys, now turned analyst, uh, was talking about Dallas Cowboys and it said that he it will behoove them to keep running the ball. I understand that. And yes, you do need to run the ball. That's important. But if Tampa Bay is going to do what they did last year and clog that middle with eight eight players in the box, um, at some point, Dak Prescott is going to have to take it upon himself to back them up, right? Because I feel like it's disrespectful to Dak because you think that Dak is just not going to be able to do anything, but I think now that this is Dak's team for real, sometimes he needs to um, realize that it's your team and take over and do some of the things that Tony Romo did. Like Tony Romo, even though Jason Garrett was his coordinator for some time, he went against the grain and like whenever Jason Garrett called something, if he didn't agree with it at that time, if he saw something different that the defense was giving him and it was somewhere that he can um, combat that and, and overwork that, and, and get past that defense, he would switch to play to something totally different that Jason Garrett didn't call and do that. Now, Dak doesn't, I don't really see him doing that with Kellen Moore. Now, I, I, I would hope that he would start taking control and doing that when you see something out there, switch it up, do something different. Now, um, for those of you that don't know how offenses work, normally when an offensive coordinator, and I know I'm talking to the, to, speaking to the crowd to some people, but just for those of you that don't know, just a tidbit of information. Um, sometimes in offenses, when an offensive coordinator is called to play, there's normally three different plays, two to three different plays that they can choose from. It'd either be a throw, a pass, or RPO, something that can be turned from a run to a pass. Um, and it's normally three options that they give the quarterback on e any given play. Um, but if they go anything outside of that, the coordinator might get mad if it don't work because it's like, hey, I didn't call that. So you got to be careful with that. But like I said, if you know that it's going to work and you've seen it work before, I feel like if you're the quarterback and you're making a lot of money, you got to do what you got to do. Um, I think Dak's going to be much better this year because there's the threat now of him being able to run again. He wasn't able to run last year because he was still – you know, coming back, getting healthy from that injury. So, you know, that that that's a big thing. Um, and I will say this. Um, people should understand that um, this is going to be week one. So you're going to see some sloppiness because you've seen it in the games going on right now. Um, so when teams start, I think once they get after halftime, they'll be able to readjust and realize, okay, all right, we're back at this. And then week two, we can, we can further evaluate where we are going from there. But I know Michael Parsons is ready to go. These guys are hungry. They ain't hit nobody. <laughs> like Michael Parsons said, I, I, I want to hit somebody I don't like, <laughs> meaning I want to hit somebody that's not on my team. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. This defense looks like it's ready to go. I'm real excited about this defense. I don't know what to expect from this offense because, you know, Michael Gallup has been ruled out and James Washington is not playing. You don't have Amari Cooper anymore. CeeDee Lamb is there, but you have everybody behind them is unproven. 
Noah Brown has been here four years, but he's still unproven. Um, Jalen Tolbert is a rookie. He might be inactive for the game. Dennis Houston is an undrafted rookie, um, but he has a rapport with Dak. So I predict that Dennis Houston actually might have a good game. Pin that. Um, and if he does, go back to this video and know that I called that. Um, Simi Fahoku's got to show up now in his second year. So we don't know what to expect from these guys. Kavate Turpin, we don't know what he's going to do on offense outside of jet sweeps and handoffs and things of that nature and him being on punt, punt kick returns. Now, teams already seen him, so they're going to try to kick away from him, but hopefully he can get that ball in his hands. At least, if not score a touchdown, at least get us some good field um some field position so when Dak gets out there, we have a shorter field to work with. Brett Maher is now on the roster, as he, as as we knew he would because he's the only kicker. Um, he's going to go out there and he's going to kick, and we know that Brett Maher can kick well, but we just need to see more of it. He did good with the Saints last year, so let's see what he does now that he's back with us. Um, just some key things, um, the whole Zeke and Tony Pollard thing, you use them guys interchangeably. Zeke is damn sure still important to your team, whether you guys realize that or not, because he's one of the best running backs in the league when it comes to pass protection. I tell you guys all the time, being a running back is not just running the ball. You have to be able to pass protect. He's much better than that than Tony Pollard is. Tony Pollard is not great at that. That's why Tony Pollard more than likely would never be a number one. I mean, maybe for another team that maybe has a fullback, but on this team, he, he wouldn't be a number one. That's why I said Zeke is still here. Zeke is still going to be that dominant um, bell cow. And then Pollard is your cleanup guy. You can throw him out wide like a wide receiver. You can throw him the ball out in the backfield. You can use him on change-ups, on third downs, and things of that nature to get some chunk plays. That's, that's what he does. That's his bread and butter. Zeke's is a whole different ball game. So, um those of you that, that have been talking mess about Zeke, Zeke is highly important to this team, and you guys need to understand that for that very reason that I said. Um, <clears throat> I think CeeDee Lamb might have a day, but I'm pretty sure they're going to try to bracket him, but that's just, that's okay because it's going to give some way of these younger guys to get through and try to get something. Also, too, we also have to learn, and we don't do this with our wide receivers like other teams that I see do. We need to move him around. We know that Zeke is good. I mean, we know that CeeDee Lamb is good in the slot. That's what he did all throughout college. But in college, they moved him around. So if he was moved around in college, why can't we figure that out and do that with the Cowboys, boy genius? Come on, Kellen Moore. Like, you was a college quarterback yourself. Like, you should know the dynamics of how to move receivers around. This is probably why Amari Cooper wasn't as productive as they wanted him to be one because they didn't throw the ball like that two they didn't move these guys around these guys have talent how come when they go to other teams they do well it doesn't make sense utilize the talent that you have and do what you're supposed to do um you know on on their end on their defensive line they got Vita Vea they got um Shaq Barrett they got uh, Akeem Hicks um they got Buda Baker they got these guys out here that is on defense that's just and their line, you look at their linebacker core, right? Their linebacker core is very fast. They have a fast linebacker core. Um, they're kind of like us at the linebacker position. So if you get past their first level, these linebackers are going to come up and get in those, those gaps. So if they want to put eight men in the box, what I suggest Dak do is throw the ball deep. Not to CeeDee Lamb, but to Dennis Houston, because they're not going to notice that. Because... Nobody has tape on Dennis Houston. We know what Dennis Houston can do because we've seen that connection with him and Dak in, in training camp. But, um, you know, I'm not a coach of the team, so they're not going to listen to me, no way. But I speak it on my channel because I wish they would do some of the things that I'm saying because it works, and I've seen it, and I've seen other teams do it. So we should be able to do it. And I've seen them do it with lesser talent than we have. So I'm just saying. But... Um, my predictions, uh, I feel like it's going to be a sloppy game on offense. I, I, I feel like we're going to frustrate Tom Brady and get to him. There's going to be two interceptions on our end. Um, in this game, unlike the last one, we have to make our kicks 
because Greg didn't make them last year. The kicks is the main reason why we didn't win the last game because we only lost by a field goal. So, or was it four points? Did we lose by three or four? I got to go back and look. But either way, those points that we didn't have was because of missed kicks. So, you make those kicks, you do what you need to do on offense, you dominate on defense, we'll be fine to win this game. Um, those are the keys right there. Um, hold Tom Brady, you collapse the middle because Tom Brady don't like to be rushed up the middle. That will frustrate him. He will start yelling and cursing at his players, and you're going to throw them off their game. And then when you do that, you step on that ass, and you keep doing what you're doing, and you play sound football, and you win this damn game. If they want to lower eight in the box, throw that motherfucker deep push them back and then run that ball down their throat but you got to have a combination you got to figure it out you got to do what you need to do so with that being said guys like share subscribe to the channel let me know what you think about game one let me know what your predictions are for this game um i'm gonna say cowboys 27 um tom brady and them 24 it's gonna be a close one but with that being said josh your boy e2 blue holla y'all after the game.